Okay, I'm set up here. Uh, I went ahead and I've got the chronograph set up. Let me see, turn it on. I've got a little Pro Crony. That's a decent little unit. Uh, it seems to read pretty fair, unless you get too close to it. Um, yeah, I got these earplugs I, I like a lot. Put them in. I don't want to go any more depth than what I already am. That's something else that I regret not doing when I was a youngster. A lot of times I didn't shoot, didn't have earplugs. Never thought about using them. And, uh, yeah, I'm paying a price now. Spending all kinds of money on, uh, what you call it, um, hearing aids. Never hear silence. Um, I'm going to oil this thing up. I've got some uh, Lucas Oil products, Extreme Duty Gun Oil, uh, Maximum Heat Resistance, uh, made in the USA, important part for me. Um, it's for, uh, it says it's designed for weapons that experience high volume full auto and suppressed fire. Unfortunately, I don't own any weapons. I own a lot of firearms. I own a lot of, I own some guns. I own some air rifles. I uh, own some bows. Shoot some arrows. Don't own a single weapon. I've got uh, a lot of knives, but I don't own any weapons. I own, uh, I own firearms. So, if you own weapons, um, you're either in the law enforcement industry or you're uh, from the military. Um, those that have been in the military or are still are might choose to use a weapon, but I, uh, the oil on this thing, Linebaugh told me, John Linebaugh told me one thing that he did on his, on, what he tells you on his revolvers is, uh, is to put the oil in the, make sure you get the thing, keep it, keep it lubed up. Except it kind of acts like a shock absorber in there. A cushion, not necessarily a shock absorber, but it sure, certainly acts like as a cushion. And I've got a, I, I tend to agree with him. Um, it's, a uh, lube is, a uh, is something I don't know. These things come dry from the from the factory, and of course, uh, I guess that's okay. But you really do need to take the cylinder pin out and uh, lube the cylinder up. This cylinder will spin free quite quite readily. Uh, either direction, it'll 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 roll a long time. There's a good there's a good finish there. There's a good fit, um, and so I don't want to uh, I don't want to damage the thing. Because it does have some uh, de decent amount of, of recoil, it's that uh, that impact. That what am I trying to think of? I tried to say it the other day. It's a uh, it's it's a it's a fast it's a fast recoil. Um, it's not like some of the bigger stuff that's slower, uh, but it nevertheless. Of course, the wind's blowing, picking up again. Uh, I should have been out here at daylight, I guess. It was about 23 degrees then. Now it's probably warmed up to about, I don't know, probably 40, 35 or 40. Anyway, I'm going to clock this thing and just see what it does, a couple of shots. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and take the largest ever dissolving pack ever of Scott Rapid Dissolving RV toilet paper. I'm going to go ahead and set it up there and shoot it. And then I'm going to go and uh, load some heavier, some heavier rounds up. Uh, I don't have a set of dies for this thing, but I do have some 45 Colt dies. And um, being how they're the same at the top there, I should be able to should be able to do it. So I'm gonna launch one off here. I got a pig down there that I'm gonna shoot. Uh, I really shouldn't shoot him, but um, the problem, the thing of it is, it's already damaged, so it's not gonna hurt to. Yeah. Let's see what that did. That's wow. Is that right? 26.45? Holy guacamole. Dang. Huh. Well, let me try another one. That's, uh, I missed the pig. I shot over him. I shot too high. So, uh, I'll try to put it down there on him. Whoop! That knocked his pig butt in the dirt. Dang. That's reading 26, 2599. I gotta show you that. Uh, is that right? 
Well, I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go look at that pig. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just carry this down here. See if I can do it like this. I don't know what this is gonna look like, but uh, huh? Oh, I shot underneath him. Okay, so I shot over him at one time. Yeah. This is the pig I'm shooting. He's already been damaged quite a bit. Uh, shot through there, there, there. Dinged right there, dinged right there. Um, pocked, 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 and he's in bad shape. Uh, I really don't like to shoot my steel animals like that. It's hard on them, and they're not cheap. But that thing's shooting only 600 feet a second out of a handgun. Unless that chronograph's funky, that's incredible. Uh, I'll show you right here. I swear to God, 25.99. Review one, 26.45. High, low, $25.99. I guess you can see that. That's, uh, it's a little, it's smoking. Um, yeah, let me see here. Get this thing straightened out again. Kind of sort of where we can see it again. So, shot low that time, shot high the other time. I'm not going to change the sights on this thing simply because excuse me the um, the bullets that I have I've got uh, 310 grain cast bullets and it's a good possibility they're going to shoot higher than what these do I'm going to put it right on them this time I'm holding high and low and missing everything so and it'll see what it does when I put it right on him. And you should hear the ring, ding, your ling, ring. Shot low again. That caused my watch to come from together. Hmm. Run down there and see what that did. Oh, wait. 2588 on the velocity. I wonder if it's that longer barrel. Dang it, hit the same spot, right low. Well, at that velocity, that light bullet, there's, there's going to do some damage to the pig. Uh, I'm sure, sure of that. Alright, one more time. Let's see what we can do here. This thing's heavy to hold up. That got the pig. <clears throat> All right. We'll go down there and oops, see what the pig looks like. Uh, spun him around a time or two. Oh wow, still got him low. Right there, but look what that did. Why am I shooting so low? He was shooting low the other day. Uh, maybe I should go ahead and screw the side up a little bit. I was holding the top of his pig back. And that didn't, uh, took a chunk out of that deal. I don't want to put a camera down there shooting steel like that. The bullet splatters is liable to damage my camera. All right. So that one was 25.88. That was all the shots. And these cases are just don't it's the high intensity, the rapid impulse of this recoil on this thing. 
those cases, that thing doesn't seal up. You can see how the black streaks come all the way down to right just above the head. That's where it's probably about the end of the yeah, it's probably about the end of the case. Pretty close. So <coughs> the brass is either hard or don't know what the deal is. I'm gonna try well try another couple. I'm gonna put two or three loads rounds in here. <sighs> Mainly for the, mainly for the, uh, for the velocity check again. I'm going to shoot over the top of him again this time. See if I can hit him right in the center there. It's, I don't know what the deal is with why that's aim, aim high and hit high. It's probably hard on my watch. And if I aim low, I hit low. So I'm not sure what the the story is on the deal there. I'm trying to whoop. Now I hit an ass. That was a shot to the right. But it looked like it hit him again. It probably hit him down there on the foot. But we'll see. Dang thing can't hold together. Anyway. Oh, another 2,544 feet a second. I didn't check the, didn't think to check the, check the other one. Uh, oh yeah. That didn't necessarily do him any good. Okay, hit him in the ass where I thought it was. Thing of it is, man, it did some damage. Pretty near shot through it. Of course, this is a pock mark that I showed from before, but if you can see, it started to punch that out. It's on the verge. It's on the verge. If it had it hit, not just that pooch right there, that's what caused it to shear out right there. But uh, that's some pretty dang dang impressive for a handgun man it's kind of like I said that's hard on the pig you can see right there where it's getting trying to get poked through there and we have some other interesting items here here's the part of the bullet there's part of the bullet right there fits right in that little slot pretty good else yeah so that fits right in there huh. interesting well that's what a 2500 feet a second will do on a 200 grain 45 caliber bullet uh, it's pretty impressive so what I'm going to do now, I'll go ahead and put the put the uh, other stuff out there. That all right? We're going to try for the uh, super absorbent, fast dissolving toilet paper. All right, hopefully, hopefully that'll be, let me see, I'm gonna set this over to the side here, really don't know. <clears throat> All right, maybe we can get that in here. Now, I'm gonna use both hands this time, just because I only have. We're gonna have one good shot here, so. Ah.
Shot high on it. Twenty six, twenty four on the velocity. That's to the left. Hmm. Okie dokie. Well, the cases fall right out of there. That's 2640. That's an amazing velocity out of a 10-inch handgun. Uh, neighbor over there. Uh, dang, that's impressive. Let's take a look down there and see what we got. Maybe the chronograph's bad. I got another chronograph. Uh, well, it's, didn't even get these back ones back here. I still got some targets to shoot at, but it's, uh, it made a mess. Looks like a, Looks like I need to shoot this thing on paper and find out, get a better idea where it's actually shooting. And I was just looking to see if I could find any residual damage around here. Anyway, this is uh, kind of sort of impressive, not as much as I thought it'd be. Of course, if I had a better shot, it might help. But anyway, um, well, we'll go and uh, I'll get some targets and I'll get a, get a paper target set up in the little frame there and actually shoot at it and see what where it's hitting. See what kind of group I can get. Maybe get a three or four shot group, five shot, whatever. And then that'll about use that ammo up and then I'll go load it up and see what comes up with that uh, with those 310 grain bullets. I don't think I'm going to launch them out there that quite that fast. Wouldn't be able to do it, but uh, I'm I'm impressed that that thing's shooting 26 average. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, we got four rounds left of these uh, Hornady. They're uh, 460 mag 200 grain. These are 32 dollars, 31.95. Um, 200 grain F FTX uh, custom. Smith & Wesson Magnet. It says here that the muzzle velocity is 2200 feet a second, 50 yards is 1948, and uh, 100 yards is 1715. Well, unless that chronograph's bad, that's not true. This is, these things are shooting 20, uh, probably average, well that's 2640 there. 20, 2540 is I think was the lowest I saw. So you're averaging right at, right at 2600 feet a second. Uh, that's pretty moving on for a big bore handgun. Um, I've got four of these rounds left. I'm going to keep, i got four of the rounds left. I'm going to keep one of them for, I don't know, giggles, I guess. Um, and then I'm going to just shoot, try to see what kind of a group I can shoot on that paper. I'm going to the center. Let's see if here. Yeah, I'll aim at the center of the big, just the center of the target there. See what she does. Oh yeah, okay, I see it. It's about, just a little bit to the left and about the bottom of the diamond, big diamond. Oop, I pulled that one, I think. Now that's just to the right of the big diamond at the bottom, same elevation.
Don't know where that one went. Hopefully it hit the paper. And these things, the cases fall right out of these. Uh, so there's no excessive, doesn't seem to be any excessive pressure. I mean, the cases literally drop right out. Um, that's an impressive handgun. I, I gotta say, I, I wasn't a fan of the 460. Uh, I'm not. A, I'm not a fan of the of the, of the Smith and Wesson rounds, the, the 460 or the 500, mainly because of the of the pressures that they they shoot at. Um, they're 60, 50, 60, 60,000 psi cartridges, and I don't know. It's. Uh, I don't like the Smith and Wesson revolvers that shoot them because they're 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 big and and bulky and. Um, this one, of course, it's big. Yeah, you have to be big to shoot something. I mean, it's got, obviously you have to have a long cylinder. 10 inch barrel on this one. Um, I never did measure the cylinder gap there, but it's gotta be tight. Uh, you're not losing much through there to get 2,600 feet a second out of this thing. That's just impressive. Um, I don't know what else to say about it. I, I'm, I got this thing with the intent of converting it to a uh, 5090 sharp. Um, <laughs> <laughs> At this point, I might want to keep it like it is. Uh, <laughs> it's a, it's quite the, it's quite the unit there. Twenty. I forgot to check the velocity on those things. Um, uh, it's uh, turn this around here a little bit. Um, yeah, it's it's impressive. It's it's a, it's definitely a handful. Uh, I wouldn't, I mean, anybody can shoot it. You just, you just need to, to pay attention to it and don't, uh, don't take it for granted because it'll, I'm sure it can hurt you. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to get down here on the chronograph. I'm going to go through the chronograph here. So let's see what these readings are. All right, so let's hit a review. There's one for 10. There's 2530. Uh, 2560, 2560, 9, 26, 40, 26.50, the low, 25.30, the average, 2,600. Uh, extreme spread, 120, that's kind of high. Uh, yeah, I don't know, it's, uh, it, regardless, it's still, uh, it's still, it's still incredible. Um, I'm going to go down there and take a look and see what it did with the targets. <laughs> All right, that, uh, let's see here. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit from right here. And that's, uh, that's not a real good group. But, yeah, what it is, uh, what is that? One inch, inch and a half, one inch, inch and a half. It's about an inch and a half group. Um, if a guy uh, shot it a little bit more, got used to it. I hadn't been shooting big bore handguns for a while, and it's kind of hard on to hold them up. Like I said, and then this wind blowing, I don't try not trying to make excuses because it is what it is. But uh, I do know that if I don't shoot, this is the most I've shot. Let me see. Back this up. Uh, this is the most I've shot uh, well I was down in Texas here a while back back in March and I shot I did some did some shooting up there down there um, that's back in the, the fifth the sixth seventh and eighth or no eight seventh eighth and ninth something like that anyway I did some shooting down there then but uh <coughs> It was, um, uh, 
did my I've, sh I've shot my 500 line ball. It's a short barrel. It's shooting about 13. I want to say 1375, 1275, 1300. But that's with a 430 grain bullet of the five and a quarter inch barrel. Um, I'm gonna go take these loads. I'll probably uh, load up some of those 310 grain bolts. I don't know. I'll have to find a load for them. I don't know what they are. Uh, but we'll go from there, and then uh, maybe I'll go through the same scenario with the heavier loads. I'll shoot them on paper first to see where they're hitting, so I know about where to have the Kentucky windage goes. The gun may shoot better than an inch and a half. That's the first 20 rounds that's been put through it, or 19. I saved one out. So it's only had 19 rounds through it. Um, a gun like that, you need to put, I don't know, a couple hundred rounds through it anyway. Uh, more is better to get them smoothed up, slicked up, broke in. Um, not necessarily breaking the barrel in, but you are breaking the gun in. Uh, all the moving parts wearing together. The trigger pull is not too bad on that one. It's a little bit heavy for me, but it, it's okay. Um, but anyway, until I get the other load loaded up.